A couple of years ago, knowing Selenium web driver along with Java was more than enough to get a good salary hike. But in 2025, if you are a QA professional looking to switch a job, then my dear friends, you need to know WebDriver, Cypress, Rest Assured, Playwright, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, AWS, Azure, and even performance testing. Now, if you're planning to join a product-based company, then my dear friends, you need to know even your data structures and algorithm. And on top of that, we must be aware of our testing fundamentals and have strong understanding of the testing strategies to be an efficient tester. Now, most of you guys are between the age of 25 to 40 year old. So I'm pretty sure that you guys are working professional and managing your time for your professional commitments, your social commitments, and then taking time out of that for your studies is going to be really, really challenging. And just because a company hired you as an automation tester doesn't mean that you're going to do automation testing. Now, we'll discuss about this particular issue in some other video. Now, in this particular video, guys, I want to talk about the harsh reality of learning automation testing in 2025. And also, I will be discussing the six special tips that has helped students and professionals learn automation testing, crack high-end salary, and also prepare for the interviews fast while saving tons and tons of time. A couple of days back, guys, I got a text from one of my followers and she said that, Jatan, despite joining these various courses online and offline over Udemy, LinkedIn, YouTube, and some offline courses at her place, she's still not confident enough to work on an automation project. And even if she's trying to give interviews for the automation testing role, she's not able to crack that particular role because of the coding rounds. Now, for some of you guys, this situation might be a little bit familiar. If you try to understand this particular problem, we live in a time where we are constantly surrounded with all the information that you need for automation testing in DevOps. If you want to prepare for the automation testing roles, you'll find the interview questions floating around over the internet, maybe in some Telegram group, maybe on LinkedIn, some Facebook group, and even on some WhatsApp group. Yet, we feel that we are not confident enough to prepare and work on an automation testing job. So in this particular video, guys, I want to discuss what is the major problem that is actually creating a issue over here. But first, if we haven't met yet, hi, my name is Jatin and I'm a principal QA with 10 plus years of experience in automation testing and DevOps. I help students and professionals transform their career from manual to automation testing. So if you are interested to learn automation testing the right way by saving tons and tons of time, you should definitely check out the ESTED Mastery course. Now, the real problem over here, guys, is we are constantly stimulated with a lot of information around us. If you look carefully, there is always going to be some kind of a notification. There is going to be some kind of a text. There will be people around us that will always keep on trying to capture our attention. If you go on YouTube, every creator is fighting to capture your attention. You start watching one tutorial video on automation testing, then another one is getting suggested to you. And and before you know it, you're watching some random video over the internet which has nothing to do with automation testing. Or you're going to watch some random reel on Instagram and you're going to find yourself caught in an endless cycle of mindless scrolling. At this particular point, you guys might be thinking, maybe I should be joining some online courses because then I will be really focused in my studies. And then you're going to go to Google, search for the best automation testing course with 100% of placement. And then you'll find all these various websites that are going to pop up and you enroll to one of these courses. Now, here's the thing that you really need to understand, guys. Watching tutorials, joining online sessions, they are not really what you call as study. Study happens when you start creating project, when you start building projects by yourself. Confidence that you're looking to get 
to crack that particular next job is only going to happen when you start building application, try to fix errors, try to, you know, like read documentations. Those things are really going to help you get that confidence which you're looking for, for your interviews and even for your job. Now, if you ask me, what's the right way to learn these new automation testing trends, these programming languages and the new technologies without actually getting burned out and staying motivated throughout this whole journey? then whatever the tips that I'm going to share you now are really going to help you out in the long run. So please make sure guys that you watch this entire video till the end and whatever the tips that I'm going to share with you will help you transform your career from manual to automation testing. So without wasting time guys, let's dive into it. You might feel productive after watching any YouTube tutorial video, but in reality, is this what you call as learning? The answer is no. So instead of just passively consuming all these tutorials, please make sure that you actively engage with them. Whenever you are watching any video, please make sure that you make your own notes. Summarize what you have learned and on regular basis, test yourself whether you are able to remember that particular topic or not. A lot of time, students reach out to me and tell me that, Jatin, I have watched all these tutorial videos on creating a test automation framework, but I'm not confident enough on creating a framework by myself. This is where Active Recall comes into picture. Whenever you are watching any video, try to parallelly practice it off. Also make sure you make your own notes whenever you are practicing the videos. So in this way, you're forcing yourself to remember things. Remember, it's not about how many videos you're watching. It's about how much you're able to remember in long run. And this is what is going to give you the confidence. Now, moving on to the next study tip, guys, which is going to be your spaced reputation. We should never really underestimate the power of our brain to forget things. Whenever we are learning any new technology, we spend a lot of time completing the course, completing the tutorials, but we spend a very less time on revisiting those topics. So make sure that whenever you're learning any new topic, you spend an ample amount of time revisiting the topic again and again. In this way, you will be able to remember the topic for long run. Let's say, Today, I decide to solve a coding question and I understand the entire logic of that particular program. I'm able to write the code. Kudos. Now, instead of marking it that done, I have completed this entire coding question. I'll make sure that I'm revisiting the question again after two, three days. In this way, I will be able to remember the logic for a longer period of time and I will be able to solve this particular question during my coding rounds and along with that, I'll be a lot confident during my interviews. Let's say guys, today you have studied the topic of collection. Maybe you want to revise this particular topic after two, three days because you want to follow the spaced repetition technique. So instead of just watching the video again or revisiting the notes that you have created, what you need to do over here is, you need to try to explain this topic to someone in simple words. If you are able to explain the topic in simple words, it basically means that you have actually mastered the topic pretty well. If you are not able to explain it, it means that you need to study the topic again. And that's where the next study tip comes into picture, which is the Feynman technique. Whenever you're teaching a topic to someone, it's actually improving your understanding about that topic. So make sure that you use the Feynman technique for your spaced repetition whenever you want to revise the topics. In this way, you will be confident enough to explain the topic even in your interviews. And moving on to the next study tip, which is my favorite one, which is the Pomodoro technique. Instead of studying for long hours, try to practice to study for shorter sessions for like 20 to 25 minutes and then take a five minutes break. For example, let's say you're trying to build an automation framework, okay? Try to build the framework only for 25 minutes and then take a five minutes break. Post the break, you just do a quick recap of what you have built so far and then continue ahead. In this way, you will be able to study for a longer period of time without getting burned out. I personally use an app which is called as Forest app. And technically what this app does is it blocks my phone 
for 25 minutes and I can just focus on the task which I'm doing at the moment. So I'm going to have zero distraction at that particular moment and I will be able to perform deep work during that time. Post 25 minutes, I just take a five minutes break, just move around and then I just come back to my work. I hope this particular tip helps you out. Moving on to the next one, which is going to be the retrieval technique. Whenever you are preparing for interviews, there are going to be tons of questions which you will be finding over the internet. So instead of mugging up all those questions, um, you know, like back to back, just look at the question first and try to answer it in your own words that what do you know about this particular topic? Let's say the interview question is going to be, what do you know about collections? So first, try to answer this particular stuff in your own words. This is where you are testing yourself that whether you are aware of this particular topic or not. When you are able to answer it in your own words, then you just try to cross check what exactly the answer is written over there and what points you have missed. In this way, you will be able to remember what you already know and then you can only focus on the things which you are not aware of. Now moving on to the next step guys, which is going to be learn in public. A lot of time people think that if they are going to post a course completion certificate on LinkedIn, they will technically get a job. The answer is no. I have seen so many resumes where they will say that they have completed XYZ course from Udemy or from some testing institutes, but they have zero personal projects. If you say that you have created an automation framework, you should justify it with the help of a personal project. Automate any website, automate Amazon, automate your Flipkart, Shadi.com, you know, like just try it off, automate simple scenarios, create your own custom automation framework, put it in the GitHub repository and attach the link of that repo in your resume. That's what you call as personal project and showcase this particular personal project on LinkedIn. That's what you call as learn in public. Okay, whenever you are trying to present yourself as an automation engineer, don't say just from the skill sets that is kept in your resume. Show projects. Projects are always going to speak louder than the certifications that you're doing. I'm going to repeat it again one more time. Projects are more important than your certificates. So please make sure you spend time building projects rather than just doing courses. All right, guys, I think this video is getting insanely long over here. So I'm going to stop over here. If you found anything useful in this particular video, do share it with your friends in the field of testing. Also, let me know in the comment section what you liked and what you didn't like so that next time I'm going to make a video, I can make it more useful for you guys. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.